the the ins and outs of how you do the exit poll. So, I mean, first, you just talk us through the work that goes into the exit poll, and when do you start preparing for it? How, you know, already is it, started. Okay. When did you start? And as it gets closer, sort of, is it um, full time? We started, I think, what, October, November time. Okay. And what, what is, is the work you're doing sort of technical stuff or is it more practical stuff, sort of looking at polling well, stations? It's, 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 it's technical, practical stuff, is the okay. answer to you. Um, <laughs> so, I, I mean, to explain, the, 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 the crucial feature of the exit poll is actually isn't one exit poll, it's two exit polls. Because the, the, the methodology we... Uh, the problem we have in the United Kingdom is that we don't have what, the, what people in the States would call precinct-level counts. Right? Mm -hmm. In most countries, before anybody would ever dare to allow a ballot box leave the polling station, we, um, they would want the, count, the votes to be counted. Because the moment it leaves the polling station, who knows what might happen to it on the way to its supposed destination. Maybe it won't make it, maybe it will get stuffed, etc., etc. right? So for most countries, that is a crucial goal. Now, in our case, we go, oh, it's fine. We'll put a ballot box and a boat between E-Day and the mainland on, on Orkney in the, in the middle of winter, and it's absolutely fine. We have a little policeman on it to make sure things are okay. And we expect all these ballot papers happily to arrive unstuffed, safe arrival, right? Because, because when the Victorians decided to set the rules, and we're still following the Victorian rules, what they were concerned about is that if you had uh, precinct level counts, in those days not many people had the vote because of the franchise, you'd be able to work out who voted for whom. Right. So it's actually there for one of them. So and this is the reason why, if anybody have you ever been to a county, you may want to know, well, why is it they mix the ballot papers for all the polling stations before they start the count. It's to stop people supposedly being able to work out right. vote. Although, of course, all, all the parties are watching the verification and they can get a pretty good idea how the polling stations are worked. And in fact, now in Scotland, for STV elections, they do actually publish the data. So, so, so anyway, it, that creates a problem because therefore... the. Any exit poll is a sample of a relatively small number of polling stations. And it's impossible in the UK to come up with a sample of polling stations that you know are representative. Elsewhere you can, elsewhere you can do it. Now, and the person here who deserves the credit is David Firth, who's a statistician at the University of Warwick, who had uh, for a while been working on the prediction program for the UK. He's from Wakefield, by the way. Right, go on. Um, and David's crucial piece of advice was this, was, well, look, sure, the level of support for the parties varies dramatically from one constituency to another. Mm -hmm. But the change in support doesn't vary anything like so much. So therefore, it's easier to estimate the change in share than it is the level, in sh the level of share, okay? Um, and that so long as you then model the data thereafter, which is what we do, pretty much any sample of polling stations will do. But, of course, what you therefore need is information on how that polling station voted at the last election. Where does that information come from? Ideally, the last exit poll. So, in, so what the technical work we're engaged in at the moment, of course, is that unfortunately... Returning officers change the boundaries of polling districts occasionally. And so we're, there's a lot of work going on at the moment. Find where has it changed? Can we still go back there anyway because it's still sufficiently similar? Or are we going to have to go to somewhere else? And then uh, Roger Mortimer of Ipsos Mori, who's very, very good at this, um, gets a load of data together and we try to find a new polling station that's typical of the constituency and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So the point therefore why we're already doing preparatory work is that that work of, um, you know, has the polling station, well, first of all, is it still the same polling station or have they moved the polling yeah, station? Yeah. Can, still be, can, can we still uh, uh, put interviewers outside there? And has the polling district changed uh, significantly or not? And then also, we may also want to do some work adjusting the sample. That's the kind of work that's going on at the moment. And it's kind of really detailed 
nose grinding work, but it's crucial. And how, how big is your team then? It sounds like there's a huge amount of preparatory work. So how big is the exit poll team? Well, I mean, the, on, the, on, the, on the analysis side, one, two, three, four, about half a dozen of us. But most of the work at this stage is being done by myself um, and two or three people in Ipsos. Okay. This is actually the question I really want the answer to, which is when do you, what, at what time do you have your number and how many people know before 10 o'clock? We get, we, get, we get data continuously throughout the day. All right. Um, I'm usually, I mean, the, the data do move, but basically Labour voters have somewhat come up somewhat later. But usually we pretty much know what's going to happen by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And you um, never text me. <laughs> Because I hate to disappoint you, and it would, I, I could end up in jail for doing so, right? It's against the law to publish any information based on how people have actually voted before 10 o'clock on polling day. So the answer to your second question, as few people as possible, as late as possible, um, because we basically don't want it to leak and... You know, we go, I mean, there, there, are, there are all sorts of security procedures which I won't go into, but one thing I will tell you is I do not have this on polling day. Once we go into the exit poll room, nobody who has access to the data has this, and we give them all to a, a BBC producer. And the only call that, I, that anybody is allowed to accept is, uh, is to the uh, partner saying, I'm terribly sorry, but I've just thrown our baby into the river. <laughs> And that conversation has to take place in front of a witness. But otherwise, basically, we cannot be contacted. And that, that's not because I don't trust my colleagues. It's because it's protection, because I, therefore, am always able to... Because occasionally things do, uh, shall, we, shall we say, circulate rather more widely than desirable in the last 15 minutes or so. I can always say, hand on heart, it wasn't us, because we didn't have any means of distributing it.